Put simply for the layperson, HaKabbalah is defined as Jewish mysticism. There are, modernly, a variety of branches of HaKabbalah, but all of them originate from the same root. There is Kabbalah, C-A-B-A-L-A, which is considered a Christian cult of traditional Kabbalah. There is Kabbalah, Q-A-B-A-L-A, which is considered an astrological and theosophical version of the same. And there is also Kabbalah, K-A-B-B-A-L-A-H, which is considered the more conservatively traditional Hebrew craft. The Hebrew word origin for all these modern schools is Kabbalah, Kaf, Beth, Lamed, Heh, and translates into English as literally receipt. This meaning becomes more clear considering the definition of Kabbalah according to the Oxford Languages Dictionary. Quote, the ancient Jewish tradition of mystical interpretation of the Bible, first transmitted orally and using esoteric methods, including ciphers. End quote. So, to reiterate, HaKabbalah is, in essence, the received tradition of Hebrew mysticism. Kabbalah is often transmitted esoterically, using ciphers, and the most prominent example of such a Kabbalistic cipher is the Tree of Life diagram, a strangely shaped model, onto the vertex corners of which are placed ten attribute traits describing God, called the Sephirah, emanations. Now, like Hakabalistic schools as well, this cipher shape comes in a variety of forms, which adds much mystique and curiosity to its study. Assuming there must be a single correct and or original form of this model may be right or wrong. Nevertheless, a wide assortment of such purporting to be so, exist. Likely the most well-known version of the Tree of Life at present is the Golden Dawn model, labeling the Sephirah as planets and the paths between them as the 22 trump cards of the Rider Waite Tarot deck. The even more recent Thoth version of the same, replacing the Golden Dawn Tarot Trumps with those of the Crowley-Harris deck, changes very little. Outside the saying, Tzadi is not the star, in its attributions. The Golden Dawn arrangement of this model Alistair Crowley notes in his magnum opus, 777, is based on the so-called Naples arrangement for the shape. Other models use a slightly altered shape as the framework for placement of these holy adjectives. However, all are in general agreement that the three supernal emanations are arranged above the subtended lower seven. This description often assumes the form of a hexagon, with two of its six face sides extended. The oldest text on Hakabalah is called Sefer Yetzera. Its short version, allegedly derived as an oral tradition from the patriarch Abraham himself, 
and seems to have already been known in a verbal form prior to the first century AD. It was then that the Bahir, the second oldest text on Kabbalah, was written down by the school of Tana Nehunia ben Hakana, which included Rabbi Yishmael ben Elijah. In the late 1st and early 2nd century AD, we find the stories of Rashbi Shimon bar Yochai and perhaps his son Eleazar ben Simeon supposedly hiding in a cave for 13 years to compose the oral midrash commentary on the Torah that when published centuries later by Moshe ben Shem Tov Moses de Leon 1240 until 1305 AD came to be called the Zohar. Following Catholic pogroms persecuting the Sephardic Jews of Spain in the 1400s AD, the ideas of Hakabalah espoused in these works began to flood across Europe and combining with Christianized Neoplatonism fueled the 15th and 16th centuries Renaissance era. From this time period, countless grimoires claiming to be authentic works on Hakabalah arose and, though few can be rightly canonized, none should be neglected as inapplicable to this study. Included among these the greater and lesser keys of King Solomon, the sixth and seventh books of Moses, the acrostics of Abramelin, the Armadel and Almadel of Honorius, and the Enochian works of Dr. John D may all prove useful curricula for any student of this esoteric mystery school tradition. The popularization of English translations of these grimoires during the 20th century AD led to a new aeon of thought on magic and Hakabalah. During this time, many new experts published their interpretations of these ancient mystical texts, while other scholars sought to translate and present the source texts themselves in English. Among these are notably the Sefer Yetzirah, edited by Arya Kaplan, and the 23-volume edition of the Zohar, with commentary by Rav Yehuda Ashlag. By now, 2020, the vast majority of works on and about Hakabalah have been published in English translations and are accessible to students of any and all religious faiths, no longer being strictly a tradition of Jewish mystics only. Evidence for the study of Hakabalah from prior to the beginning of recorded history, some 6,000 to 4,000 years ago, does exist, although maybe more speculative and circumstantial proof for such than an arrowhead may be rightly seen as a direct artifact of hunting. Current historiography of our oldest oral stories dates the majority of mankind's mythemes to the region of Oceania during the last North Hemisphere Ice Age, when Australia was still mostly connected to mainland Asia by dry land. From this same region and time, we may also trace the origins of the looped string game nowadays called Cat's Cradle, 
in which a specific series of hand gestures results in a certain ladder-like lattice with 22 loops that, in many respects, resembles the later shape of the Tree of Life of Hakabalah. The discovery of this novelty, dating contemporary to the origin for such myths as a Tree of Life itself, should not be overlooked. Another source from earliest civilization, some 5,000 years ago, that indicates complex ciphers and numerology were already by then subjects of some long study in the Levant, are the seven Kamiya number square talismans. Each of these may be depicted as a square of Hebrew or English letters of gematria numbers, of astrological symbols, as a camia, sigil pattern, etc. And so each may be arranged into a series of cubes of seven consecutive sizes. This idea of cubic nesting demonstrates a highly advanced level of thinking in an era when it is now believed mankind was still cultivating the first rudimentary use of canals in agriculture. Although since obscured by the sands of time, the original meaning of these camia, number squares, should be thought of as being intrinsically tied to the study of Hakabalah. Even the gematria, letter number substitution, of the word Kabbalah itself indicates a very advanced ancient knowledge of what today can only be called occult science. Quaff, 100, plus Bet, 2, plus Lamed, 30, plus He, 5, equals a sum total of 137, the 33rd prime number, and in quantum mechanics, ostensibly tantamount to the fine structure constant's reciprocal sum, which is currently believed to be precisely 137.036. It is extremely unlikely the ancient Hebrews, from around the 20th century BC, who coined the term Kabbalah, knew of its gematria in the context of it being the fine structure constant's reciprocal sum in quantum mechanics, a field of science that arose much later, in the 20th century AD. Nevertheless, this coincidence persists unexplained. Ultimately, whatever 2D shape is thought to be an accurate depiction of the Tree of Life diagram of Hakabalah by anyone, there should be little debate that the original form all these images sought to outline in shadow on plane space was the regular 4D polytope now known to geometers as the hypercube or tesseract. The simplest form of such is a single cube over time where the fourth dimension is figuratively measured as the difference between the cube and itself. As this spatial shape is then examined and rotated, its appearance becomes distorted, and it appears to resemble different shapes. The single cube shape can cast a hexagonal shadow when lit from above one of its vertex corners. Likewise, the 4D hypercube 
casts a single cube shadow into 3D below it when lit from above one of its vertex corners. However, when the cube or hypercube is illuminated from above one of its face sides, the shadow it casts is quite different, and again, when the light is shown from above one of the shape's leg edges, the shadow changes shape again. In the former case, the shape cast as a shadow of the hypercube shows the twin cubes nested, one within the other. And in the latter case, the shape cast as a shadow of the hypercube shows the twin cubes conjoined, one beside the other, merged along one face side, like two cubical rooms sharing a common wall. In the context of literature on Hakabalah, the shape of the twin cubes conjoined is of utmost significance to ancient metaphysicians because it symbolizes the upper and lower realms of which it is said, as above, so below. It conjures up imagery of the rough and perfected ashlars of F and A M and of the double cubical altar of the Golden Dawn, shown by Crowley, likely inverted, in Magic Book Four, in the section on the implements of ceremonial magic, where the cube of the four elements is placed supernal to the four watchtowers of John Dee's Enochian system. From my own studies, I have found that, using 32 smaller cubes, one may construct a rudimentary model of the Tree of Life in three dimensions as a pair of conjoined, larger, empty cubes, such that there are 20 paths along 10 exposed face sides including the top and bottom. These 20 paths may then be labeled with either 19 Hebrew letters from the ancient Hebrew alphabet of 22 letters, omitting the three mother letters, Aleph, Mem, and Shin, or else with their correspondent astrological signs signifying the twelve constellations of the zodiac as horizontal paths and seven classical planets of antiquity, including sun and moon, and with Mercury appearing twice, as vertical paths. Comparing such models, we may find quite easily that the corresponding astrological signs to the Hebrew letters that spell Kabbalah, Kof, Bet, Lamed, He, appear to be, respectively, Pisces, Moon, Libra, Cancer. It should be noted by any ardent researcher that the attributions given here for each Hebrew letter from astrology differ in my own model's arrangement from all others, such that, for example, the word Kabbalah, according to the Golden Dawn's Tree of Life diagram, would correspond to the astrological signs Moon, Mercury, Libra, Aquarius, respectively. I am not saying one is right and the other wrong. I am simply positing my own form of model for the tree of life as mapped onto a conjoined hypercube in three-dimensional space. Kabbalah often comes encoded, and the more complex the encryption method, the more aligned to modern cybernetics 
the study of such cryptography becomes. The chaos and complex systems theories that arose in the latter half of the 20th century AD are both methods for the human brain to comprehend itself. Modern cellular computers merely mechanically mimic our brains, those biological supercomputers, that remain capable of processing at faster than quantum speeds. Thus, the more complex the model of Hakabalah, the more it engages the brain and lights up our neural pathways. The most complex such model remains now the Four Watchtowers model of John Dee's Enochian system. Decoding what has been written about it by S. L. Mathers, 1854 to 1918. In the Golden Dawn work published by Israel Regardi, 1907 until 1985, let alone picking up study of this model where the Golden Dawn left off at the turn of the last century, may be a daunting task to one preoccupied by material concerns such as money, lust, or hunger. Nevertheless, the study of John Dee's Enochian models does expand the mind by exposing the brain's neural network to a more complex model for cryptology. Ostensibly, it increases one's intellect by teaching them something they didn't already know. However, there are also those who proselytize that Hakabalah is evil, and they have invented as justification for their feverish phobias the imaginary boogeyman of the Black Cube of Saturn premise. This idea roughly connects the hexagonal EM fields around the north and south poles of the planet Saturn to Nazi hollow earth theories and to the political agenda of radicalizing Islam by slandering the Kaaba of Mecca, a centerpiece of the modern Muslim religious faith. If such naysayers do not wish to share in a technologically improved utopian future, they yet remain free to assail Hakabalah as leading to a cyborg and even AI dystopia, even though such is the opposite of the truth.